I think that there's that dynamic. So that was a long answer to why I did the the dossier, but. All right, real quick, because I want to get back to Greg Caden, but I want to yeah. ask about, the, tell tell everybody what uh, season one of the dossier covered. In season one, what did you cover? Um, I mean, what we did basically is we had Phil start from day one of of really of of his investigation. So what that means is is when Phil decides to investigate this, you know, this is a case that is inside the LAPD that they're just ignoring, right? And Phil Carson's story in the one we tell in the dossier is Phil's job at the FBI was in public corruption. He had no idea who anyone was in the hip hop music industry. Phil covered dirty politicians and dirty cops. So what Phil does is one of his early cases is a case called the Rampart Police Scandal, which we talk about in the dossier. And this is about the Rampart Division where David Mack and Rafael Perez came out of. Right. But the story that Phil tells about Rampart is when they did the Rampart investigation, Inside of the Rampart Division, there was a list of dirty cops that was like 30 deep. And the bosses at the FBI and the LAPD said, no, 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 no. You know what? Let's just make a nice narrative and let's take Rafael Perez. Let's take, you know, Mac and make them the bad guys. And what Phil was saying is that's fine, but you got another list of about 30 cops that are dirty. You know what I'm saying? And they wanted nothing to do with it. So we saw that pattern of LAPD corruption. Within that list of LAPD officers was a guy by the name of Ruben Palmeris. And Ruben Palmeris, while Mac and Perez were doing their dirt, went into business with the Sinaloa drug cartel as an LAPD cop. And he was ripping drug dealers in South Central. And he would rip go in with guys that, you know, were tacked up as if LAPD SWAT guys. They would take the money and the drugs. And then he had a woman in the Sinaloa drug cartel that would resell the drugs back out on the streets. Mm. And Phil did that case. And he saw LAPD corruption in that case. He's literally sitting at home watching a VH1 special about the murder of Biggie. And he says, I... This is, I, this is a pattern. I know what's going on here. And he literally goes to his bosses and he says, Mac Perez, all of the dirtiness of the LAPD, I want to investigate this. And the bosses at the FBI say, go ahead, Phil. And Phil makes a case. He makes what's called a prosecutive report, which is his investigation, his sources, his informants, and what he wants to take to the U.S. attorney. And when he builds this case, the FBI signs off on it and says, this looks like a case. Let the U.S. attorney prosecute Mac, Perez, Suge. And the U.S. attorney in the city of Los Angeles shut this case down. Okay? So Phil's story is really what he compiled as an FBI agent around the murder of Biggie, which he solved the murder, right? He had access to bank records. He had access to phone records. He had an upwards, and, and when the documents come out, you'll see he had an upwards of 15 to 20 confidential informants and confidential sources that he was talking to um, to give him information about what exactly transpired. And his work was so good that um, someone within the city of Los Angeles came to him in, an, in a federal building and said, what are you doing? Do you realize if we do this case, this will bankrupt the city of Los Angeles? This is a true story. I believe it. Isn't it? Oh, yeah, this is, this is all completely true and backed up and verified 
not only by Phil, but other FBI agents and documents at the time inside the FBI. So Phil's story, if you really want to boil it down to its essence, is about a billion dollar cover up, right? Because that's what big probably is worth, arguably. You know, it's 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 a horrific thing to say of someone's life is worth X. But he he you know, at the time, I think when when Keith Klinkscales, a vibe testified at the civil trial, he put his net worth at five hundred million. Right. You know, at that yeah, time. Geez. Yeah. So um, what what it what the dossier really goes into is uh, is this story in a real detail oriented way. Right. But also told by interviews that I did with various characters that also supported Phil's narrative and story. People right. like Sergio Robledo, who was the Wallace family private investigator, mm -hmm. people like Richard Valderrama, who worked for the L.A. County Sheriff's Office as one of the top gang investigators in Compton. Right. And had all of that intel about what was going on with Reggie, what was going on with Suge, what was going on with Mac Perez, all of that shit. Fascinating guy. You know, um, you know, you have people like Mario Hammonds. Um, who, you know, is also around and is a part of the podcast, Kenneth Boagney. So I started in, in a, in a strategic way to tell Phil's story, but also bring in all of these other voices that had other information that was really fascinating, you know, right. and I yeah. thought told a pretty updated story about really not so much, well, you know, on that night, Biggie's car was here and blah, blah, blah. But the cover up of right. the LAPD and the U.S. Attorney's Office in Los Angeles and how they were able to pull it off, you know, and get away with it um, and still continue to get away with it um, this day today. Yeah, that's very true. And like I said, I, I was fascinated. I, I'd be waiting like. Midnight, whenever it is, the next day, I'm waiting for the next episode to drop because that was the first time I felt like I was getting the real story behind what, what took place outside of what Russell Poole had done. Then after Russell Poole, is this whole crazy-ass, bullshit-ass story comes out that is, like, ridiculous. Now, 